Yo. Come on, man. We talked about this? Yeah. I give up. All right. Let's go find you a chair. Nope. 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 Yep. This could be you. Every time you turn on your PC. Super chill CPU, happy you. Kraken X61 by NZXT. Purchase discount in the description below. So what's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and I spend a dangerous amount of time in front of my computer editing videos, writing, blah blah blah. But ever since getting the DX Racer chair and then moving on to the Vertigear chair and now this from Noble, I realized just how wrong this entire gaming chair industry is for ergonomic daily use. Now, if you think about it, gaming chairs are perfect for esports events for promotional purposes and marketing and whatever. They're excellent for show coverage, like, uh, you know, being part of a demo set, but it's not really good for daily use. And that's a fact. Be warned if you're considering you're buying one because of how awesome and popular they are on the market. Now, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a party pooper and uh, just ruin the mood for this video. So stick around. It's going to be a good one. Lots of insightful information if you're considering to buy a gaming chair for yourself. So stay tuned. So the chair in question we have today is from Noble. It's part of their Epic series in real leather. So that's awesome. It's also in black color. Price wise, it's 550 euros since they're based out of Berlin. Uh, so expect around 600 plus US dollars for real leather and some 300 plus for the PU leather. Now this is actually the best gaming chair that I've owned in terms of comfort, which is thanks to that real leather cover for the seat itself and the backrest. Aside from being easy to clean, it does not concentrate the heat, which is so awesome for the summer months. And that alone puts it ahead of many competing chair brands that don't use real leather. It feels great. I haven't noticed any imperfections in the stitching and generally uh, real leather is more durable in the long term. The diamond stitching is a nice touch. It certainly fits the noble brand and I like the full black appearance although accent stitching is available. The basics of the chair include a smooth gas lift with about 10 centimeters of height increase which decreases to about 8 centimeters when you actually sit on it because of the compression. We have 45 degree adjustment on the back seat if you want a leisure posture and then unlocking this lever gives you 14 degrees of seat recline that I find has good enough resistance and doesn't just rock back and less intended. The armrests have everything we need with height adjustment. You can slide them side to side to create more space in the middle and also slide them lengthwise to accommodate for where your elbows might fall and they can also rotate in and out which I constantly use to create either enough area for my legs when they're on the seat itself or or if I want my elbows closer to the body. So it's all made to work for you. The surface of the armrest is also fine. Uh, it's plastic, but feels very nice on the hand. And that's very important as I level the armrest to my table height, which gives me nice support. Or I can simply lower them if I need to tuck myself uh, under the table for an editing session. Uh, the wheels, by the way, are very quiet. Rotation is fine on carpet and the wood floor. Now materials, the wheels and the armrest is one thing, but the core of the chair is what matters the most. So the seat is a bucket seat, which means you have raised grooves on each side and it's kind of locks you in the middle so you don't move around. 
Luckily, the sides are not raised much and we have a much wider front that allows me to put up my legs on the chair and avoid all the rules when it comes to proper posture. Now, I was surprised at how little padding there was on the seat itself, which I actually don't mind. You're not sinking into anything soft and I feel the support is there, so the seat portion is quite good. But when it comes to the lateral support of the backrest, this is where gaming chairs lose the ergonomic appeal. These chairs are the most comfortable when you're leaning back into the seat, which is fine for leisurely activity on your desk, but when you need to maintain proper posture for hours and hours on end, the back seat is no good. This is primarily because of the side wings that again supposed to slot you into the chair. Luckily, the side extensions at my waist are angled outwards and don't really interfere with my posture. But look what happens when I strengthen the back seat. There's absolutely no support for your lower back, especially with these additional curves on the top of the frame above my shoulders that sort of curve you inwards. So this entire frame design relies on one lumbar pillow to be considered comfortable when sitting upright with proper back position. Now the pillow is very comfortable to the touch with foam inside which I wish was memory foam as it's a little bit too thick and a little bit too firm but without the pillow your back is a curve which is ridiculous if you try to sit straight. And so this racing seat design is fine if you lean back and have a leisure posture, maybe put on the pillow and try to relax, but at its core as an ergonomic chair, well, it's quite sad to see a single lumbar pillow being the saving grace for comfort when you sit normally. And so here's a PSA for all the gaming chair brands. You figured out your visuals. They all look pretty and attractive. We all want them. That's a done deal. You figured out your market share. Nice big chunk from the gaming industry. But please, please, please fix the backrest back support. So it's not a single flat piece but we have nice lower back support like a built-in lumbar cushion that has actual support for ergonomics straight use you know when you're sitting straight in front of the computer and not just slouching back and you know going boss mode like that that would be fantastic and actually considerable for consistent daily use uh for like home office and such and so this is my third gaming chair and i only now realize sort of what is wrong with the entire industry and i can't wait for it to improve so for all potential buyers you should all have realistic expectations in terms of ergonomics and comfort uh, if you are to buy one of these gaming chairs i do like that noble is covering all their bases in terms of excellent real leather materials nice armrest nice wheels and average build quality in terms of what we can expect at this price point but i would love to see the chair industry within the gaming sphere change for me to recommend it as a daily consistent use or driver as a chair and so guys i hope you enjoyed this review i'm interested in hearing what type of surface has the pleasure of touching your bottom let us know in the comments down below i'm dimitri with hardware canucks and we'll see you in the next video